In this video, we're going to learn all about plant cells. Now, hopefully you've already checked out my previous video on animal cell structure where we went through loads of organelles. So for this video, we're just going to focus on the organelles that are plant cell only. But if you want to go through functions of, say, the Golgi body or the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, do check out my previous video on animal cells. Let's start by seeing if we can label a plant cell in A level detail. So let's start at the top here. Here we've got the cell wall, which we should know from GCSE is made of cellulose, and that's on the outside of the plant cell. Let's go around in a clockwise direction. So here we've got the rough endoplasmic reticulum. We know it's rough because it's covered in ribosomes. It's made of flattened membrane bound sacs or cystinae, and it is actually continuous with the outer membrane of the nucleus. Moving around here, I'm going to guess it's a chloroplast because it's green, but I will show you in a second another way to identify chloroplasts when we look at their actual structure. In the middle of the nucleus, we have the nucleolus, which is obviously where ribosomes are produced. Inside the nucleus, we have the nucleoplasm, which is where we find the DNA um, or the chromatin because the DNA is wrapped around histoproteins. Here we've got the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is responsible for synthesizing lipids and carbohydrates. Here we've got a nuclear pore in what we would call the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane. So this whole structure here is the nucleus, which wasn't actually labeled, but yeah, the whole thing is the nucleus. There's just lots of different parts to it. Over here, we've got a ribosome which would be a larger ATS ribosome, same as the ribosomes that are attached to the rough ER surface. This is called a plasmodesma, which is basically a channel through the cell wall which connects adjacent plant cells. So substances can move between the plant cells, such as amino acids or glucose or water. Here we've got the cytoplasm, which fills the cell. And obviously we find the cytoskeleton in the cytoplasm as well. Here we've got mitochondrion, which is the site of aerobic respiration, makes ATP. We did go through the structure and function of all of these organelles in the previous video, by the way. Here we've got, well, this one here is the permanent vacuole, which we know from GCSE, plant cells have large permanent vacuoles. This is surrounded by a membrane, and the membrane is called the tonoplast. So I'll label that on there as well. And then here, I'm guessing this is some kind of vesicle, smaller vesicle containing maybe a protein or an enzyme, for example. And then inside the cell wall, we've got the cell surface membrane. Or alternatively, we can call it the plasma membrane. So you've learnt most of these organelles already because they're found in animal cells too, but we have got some new ones, haven't we? So we've got the cellulose cell wall, we've got the chloroplast, and we've got that large permanent vacuole. So let's go through now and see if we can learn more about their structures. I just thought, actually, there's no Golgi body on this diagram. There is a Golgi body in a plant cell, so don't let that confuse you. It's obviously not shown on this diagram, but there is a Golgi body or a Golgi apparatus, which is used to modify proteins and lipids or sort proteins and lipids and then package them into vesicles. So here is a chloroplast. Have a look at the diagram down the bottom. You'll do this again in year 13 when you do photosynthesis, but in year 12, we do learn the structure. So the chloroplast envelope, it is a double membrane, okay? So the nucleus has a double membrane, mitochondria have a double membrane, chloroplasts have a double membrane, and each of those membranes does consist of a phospholipid bilayer, okay? So you can see here, the outer membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, and the inner membrane is another phospholipid bilayer. The thylakoids, they are disc-like structures that stack into grana. So you can see a granum here, which is a single stack of thylakoid discs, but there are multiple grana. So grana is just a plural. And you can see here one of the individual thylakoids or thylakoid discs, and they stack up to form a granum. 
These discs are surrounded by thylakoid membranes. We've got a third membrane in the chloroplast. Okay. We had the outer membrane, we had the inner membrane, and now we've got the thylakoid membranes that surround the thylakoid discs. They have a really large surface area, and that is important for photosynthesis because stage one, which is the light-dependent reaction, occurs on the thylakoid membrane. So the larger the surface area, the more of the light-dependent reaction can occur, which if you're year 13, you will know makes ATP and NADP. H, so a really important reaction. Inside the chloroplast, we have the stroma, which is the fluid filled center of the chloroplast. It contains the chloroplast's own DNA and its own ribosomes. Now, just like the mitochondria and just like a prokaryotic cell, the DNA will be circular and not associated with histone proteins and the ribosomes are the smaller 70S size, just like the mitochondria and prokaryotic cells. You may also see starch grains inside chloroplasts. I can draw one on. Yeah, now a starch grain is a store of starch, so it is made from many alpha glucose monomers joined together with glycosidic bonds and that starch is, star uh, starch is stored because it's large, it's insoluble, it doesn't affect the water potential and it can't diffuse out. Um, another thing about the stroma is stage two of photosynthesis which is the light independent reaction occurs there. Also known as the Calvin cycle or the dark reactions, it doesn't directly require light but that does happen in the stroma, and that's where we see the actual production of glucose and other organic compounds. Let's have a look at the large permanent vacuole, which we can see here in yellow. So it's a fluid-filled sac. It has a single membrane around its outside, which we can see here, which is called the tonoplast. It contains, I think at GCSE we say cell sap, don't we? But it contains a mixture of different things, water, sugars, amino acids, and mineral ions. It's a temporary food store, and it also helps to keep plant cells turgid because when it's full of solution, it pushes out against the cell membrane, which pushes out against the cell wall, and it will help to maintain the shape of the cell, give it some structural support, and what we say is it keeps the cell turgid. The cellulose cell wall, which is on the outside of the plant cell. It's made of the polysaccharide cellulose. Now you'll remember from biological molecules, cellulose is made from many beta glucose monomers joined together with glycosidic bonds. You'll also know that they are long straight chains of beta glucose and that they run parallel with each other to form microfibrils and many microfibrils join together to form macrofibrils and that's all held together with many hydrogen bonds. So a little revision there on the structure of cellulose but those many hydrogen bonds are really important for the strength of that cell wall. There is a middle lamella between adjacent cell walls, so between the cell wall of one plant cell and the cell wall of the next, which cements them together. And it does, in terms of function, provide mechanical strength. It prevents the cell from bursting when water enters by osmosis. Whereas we know animal cells, because they don't have a cell wall, they can undergo cell lysis or they can burst when too much water moves in by osmosis. The reason this cell will not burst is because the cell wall can withstand the pressure exerted on it. So even if the cytoplasm is full of water and the vacuole is full of water and they're pushing out against the cell membrane, the cell wall can withstand what we call that turgor pressure. So the plant cell will become turgid and that will help to give the cell strength and support and the overall plant support so it can stand up. You know, plants don't have skeletons like we do, so they need something else to help keep them upright. 
Just to finish with, let's compare the structure of a chloroplast in a plant cell with a mitochondrion, which is found in both plant cells and animal cells, because this idea does come up quite a lot. They do both have a double membrane. So that's one similarity that we can give between these two organelles. They both have an inner and an outer membrane. So we can say they both have a double membrane. They both have their own ribosomes, which are 70S ribosomes, and they both have their own DNA, which is circular, and there are no histone proteins. So the DNA is not associated with histone proteins. Because they both have their own DNA and their own ribosomes, they can both synthesize their own proteins, e.g. enzymes. Because both of these organelles are responsible for carrying out metabolic reactions, right? The mitochondria carry out respiration, specifically aerobic respiration, and the chloroplasts carry out photosynthesis. Okay, these are both metabolic reactions. They do use enzymes, and these organelles are able to produce their own enzymes because they've got the DNA to code for the sequence of amino acids, and they've got the ribosomes to actually manufacture them or put those amino acids together in the correct order. They both have an intermembrane space between the inner and the outer membrane, probably not that important. But the other thing we could say is internally, they both have a very large surface area. So if you think about the mitochondria, mitochondria have cristae, which are folds of the inner membrane. Now that gives the mitochondria a huge internal surface area for respiration. The chloroplasts have thylakoids, which have a thylakoid membrane. Again, this gives chloroplasts a very large internal surface area, which is going to be used in the light dependent reaction, the first stage of photosynthesis. So it means that these metabolic reactions can happen quicker. There's more ATP synthase on these membranes. If you're in year 13, you'll know there's more electron transport chains on these membranes. So they can make more ATP the bigger that internal surface area is. I hope you found this video useful. As I said, go back and check out my animal cell video as well. Put it all together and then you've got yourself a nice little uh, revision video and hopefully some notes that you've made too about all of these organelles in eukaryotic cells.